Hello everyone. For this Random Talk Sunday, I thought it would be interesting to discuss um, some of my favorite artists. Now, it's very difficult to sort of narrow down this list because, again, I, I do enjoy a variety of art. Um, but I thought it would be an interesting topic considering that um, one of my fans requested that I sort of delve into art and paintings. So I thought it would be an interesting start to sort of discuss my favorite artists, um, those that I find to have a lot of um, compelling works. So without further ado, let me discuss these artists. The first artist that I wanted to briefly discuss is Vincent van Gogh. Now the interesting thing about Vincent van Gogh is, is that he was really obsessed with color, <laughs> like like really obsessed with color. and focusing on color and blending colors and he he really enjoyed color um in fact so much so that uh within a video that we watched about Vincent van Gogh apparently he hate he ate his paint because he enjoyed color so much <laughs> yeah he he had a very interesting life uh Vincent van Gogh um but i guess i would say that the most interesting of his pieces include The Starry Night, which I think does a really good job of blending in color and how it kind of looks like something that could be within the realms of reality and then it also looks like something that's, you know, within a fantasy sort of. Uh, it's just very interesting how detailed and how well blended and structured the painting is and I think it's something that Vincent van Gogh sort of enjoyed painting. Uh, another piece that I really enjoy of his is the irises, which is basically uh, these blue flowers. And they're just, I just really like how he used the color within these flowers to make it stand out. And and, the, and I, I, I really like um, paintings that are focused in on nature. And so I, I really enjoyed how he used these colors to... Um, to make these sort of flowers in particular sort of stand out. Um, I also like the Starry Night Over the Road. I think that's another one that is sort of similar to the Starry Night, but also is rather distinct in how it approaches the, the how it approaches the, the colors there. And uh, I think largely his works not only focused on nature and um, and the uh, certain times of the day, but I think they also focus in on people, too. Like, he liked drawing sort of the sort of everyday man and the farmer. Uh, people doing, like, you know, hard labor, I think, was something that he liked uh, investing time in. I don't think he really liked, liked painting, you know, rich, the rich and sophisticated. I think he was more of a, of a down-to-earth kind of guy and liked, liked the sort of everyday man. So that's, I think, what resides in the majority of his works is nature, people, and starry nights. <laughs> now the next artist that I'm going to briefly discuss is Franz Marc. And Franz Marc is sort of an Impressionist similar to Van Gogh, except he's a German Impressionist. And a lot of his works focused on watercolor. Uh, he, he really used watercolor as his main um, source of, of presenting art and majority of his works were focused on nature in particular horses uh, and animals uh, he he had one of his more famous works is like the blue rider where there's all these different horses and they sort of um, are presented sort of in motion um, and I think that's what he likes to do with his works. He's, he likes to present animals sort of in a in a motion. They're not really like so stiff. There's always a little bit of fluidness to them. And I think that um, works with his approach to art because um, watercolors sort of flow and um, they're not really designed to be sort of uh, you know very detailed and um, and uh, very um, stiff. They're just designed to kind of blend and flow within uh, 
within the painting. So it, it I think, brings out a very distinct style, and his works, I think, are very interesting, in particular his blue horses. And as well as, his, I think he also focused on deer or foxes, uh, deer and foxes too, um, and they they all seem to have this sort of fluidness to them. So I think his works are definitely recommending, re worth recommending, and I also like how he approached um, uh, this uh, this uh, this idea of um, presenting animals in such a distinct way. Uh, I would say, as far as from what I know from his sort of history, I I did a project in high school on this artist in particular for German class because he was German, and uh, I guess he went through the First World War, and uh, I think that and, and that probably was fairly traumatizing for him, and so I think art was a way of of bringing out I, I guess his emotions and bringing out sort of the beauty of nature and you know and how and his paintings always bring out this sort of peacefulness to them so I think art was really a way for him to to you know cope with the with the things that he ultimately had to go through in life now the next artist I'm going to mention is a very well-known artist and is very is a, I guess you would consider to be a very traditional artist since he's a classical painter and sculptor, and his name is Michelangelo. Now, the ones, the three that I think stand out for Michelangelo in particular include David, the Sistine Chapel, and Pila. Um, David for the for the sort of uh, emotions of manhood, you know this. This confidence that David sort of displays in the sculpture and the the and the the way he has his posture, I think, represents sort of a um, a, a very uh, masculine sort of ideal kind of man, and I think that's kind of what a lot of people get out of the paint or out of the sculpture, and what a lot of people enjoy about the sculpture. In particular, I find it just interesting how it's it's very um, it feels very prominent and it it feels very proud of itself sort of the sculpture uh and it and it's there's a lot of detail to it and i think it's um it's and i think sculpting is something that's not an easy task to do so kudos to you michelangelo for making david <laughs> uh now the sistine chapel is also very interesting work because it has a lot of details to it and it's just amazing how he literally drew from the ceiling. And um, I think he was also not as, I don't think he could actually see all that well, too. So I can imagine just like kind of like just laying on your back and just trying to draw this thing, <laughs> this, this painting that's supposed to be on the ceiling. Um, it must have taken a lot of time and a lot of patience and a lot of um, dedication to ultimately make this kind of work but it's very elaborate it's very um it's very over the top uh especially with all of these different things kind of going on at once i think the one that stands out in particular is um is uh you know david and god sort of trying to meet each other yeah i'll take some it's just my mom asking me about lunch uh and basically I think the Sistine Chapel just has this, this, um, this, it's not only elaborate, but it's just full of energy and full of these different things going on. And, um, I think that's really what, um, makes his works distinct because you can just zoom in on one thing and you can see, wow, this is a lot of detail because even though it looks like it would be a, it looks like very, um, big as a whole there's a lot of little things that Michelangelo puts in that make it um make it make each part of it sort of distinct now Pila is the last one I wanted to mention and it's basically a sculpture of Mary and Jesus and again this kind of brings out different emotions than the David where David is standing up high and is very confident 
Um, Mary's sort of looking down and is sad, um, and, you know, she's basically holding the sort of dead Jesus in her arms, and she's kind of um, filled with, like, sorrow and heartache, and and I think there's a lot of detail in particular when it comes to her um, big amounts of clothing that she wears, because she's fairly covered up, um, I think, sort of to just emphasize her virginity, um, and... Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think, and it's interesting, too, because she's not really looking at, at Jesus, per se, but she's, like, looking down. And I think that's, that's interesting that it, that she's not really looking at him, but rather is maybe just overcome so sh with, with, um, with emotion that she doesn't, that she can't really, um, that she can't, that sh she, that she feels like that she's lost, I guess, maybe a part of herself. Um, so, uh, I think it's a very interesting sculpture and definitely one, a one, a very elaborate one with a lot of details. So definitely worth recommending, uh, which you can see, I believe, I believe it was in the Vatican that, where I saw it. Um, so that's that. Uh, and David, I actually didn't see, uh, in Florence, I think there's a, a place where you can go see the actual David, but there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of copies, so all of the copies look pretty much the same. Um, but, uh, that's, I think, all I can say about Michelangelo. The second to last artist that I'm going to briefly mention is Botticelli. Um, and, uh... He has a very elaborate style of painting, too, that focuses on detail similar to Michelangelo. But it's, it's very, instead of it being very godlike, it's, it's very, it's very, it's, it's, it's centered a lot around beauty. Uh, in particular with the birth of Venus, where we see, you know, sort of Venus coming onto the shell and, um, or basically being on the shell and having all of this elaborate, um, having all of this, uh, elaborate attention being brought, up, brought upon her by all of these, uh, gods and goddesses, and it's, it's, it's really interesting, um, just how, how much detail is put into the painting, and also, um, how, how, just how pretty it is, it's very, it's very pretty painting, uh, there's just a lot of uh, emphasis on nature, um, there's a, there's an emphasis on color, and just, just, and it's just very, um, very, uh, it's just very godlike, I guess, in the sense of beauty, um, and more focused in on sort of the pagan culture rather than the sort of Christian sort of monotheistic, uh, culture, and so I think that's, that's very that's very interesting and and I think it's definitely one of the paintings that's that really stands out. Primavera is also another painting that's really pretty. Um, primavera basically means spring, I believe in Italian, and it's just an elaborate painting of the gods and goddesses, you know, enjoying spring. And I think there's nymphs too, like dancing, and it's just very very peaceful and it's almost like going into sort of a fairy tale. Uh, there's a lot of nature, trees, um, it's, it's just one of those well-detailed, fun paintings to look at. Um, and last but certainly not least, there's also Venus and Mars, which has Venus and Mars, and basically within the painting, Mars is asleep, and there's like, and, um, Venus is sort of staring off, like, fairly aloof, and, uh, the interesting thing too is that um Venus um as Venus is sort of staring off and Mars is asleep in the background you see like these little um goat slash human people and and they're almost like children sort of and they're like it looks like that they're stealing like all of um these warlike um uh uh these warlike, uh, things, like, um, I think it's, one's a spear, like, the two are carrying, like, this big spear, I don't know if there's also, like, there's, 
they steal like some armor or something too. Um, but and they're sort of kind of laughing too as they do it. Um, and this sort of makes sense because Mars is supposed to sort of be the god of war. Um, at least I believe within uh, this believe within the Greek slash Roman mytho mythology. And basically, <laughs> he's basically they're just kind of just stealing all of his stuff. Um, and they're sort of laughing at it because, you know, he's asleep. Um, it's kind of goofy uh, as a painting, but I think it's, it's interesting because it brings out the sort of, um, the sort of mischief and sort of the light and mischief that kind of goes on, um, sort of, it's, and it's, and it's, it's just one of those very elaborate paintings, too, um, with people's expressions and, um, it's it's definitely I think a painting worth recommending. And the last painter I'm going to briefly discuss is Pierre Auguste Renier, and he did um, the luncheon of the boating party. And basically, you know, they're at a luncheon on a boating party, and basically there's these people who are sort of um, sort of celebrating, talking. There's a girl with a dog. You know, it's very peaceful. It's very serene. Uh, he has sort of this distinct two impressionist style art where everything sort of kind of blends in together, but there's but you can still make out people's faces and expressions. So it's it's very interesting. It's very fluid, and it's, it's really um, an enjoyable painting to look at. Uh, he also did the Bal du Moulin de la Cota Cota. It. Um, I'm, I apologize if I butchered that complete that title completely, but basically, uh, this painting focuses in more on different people and what they're doing. Um, the luncheon doesn't have necessarily a lot of people, but um, gives us a little bit more focus. Whereas uh, with this painting, you see that there's all these different things going on. You know, there's people dancing, there's people sitting and talking. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, uh, just, um, movement going on. And, uh, this, I think, just flows just so nicely. And it feels very, uh, again, it just feels very peaceful, serene, and, and fun. It's, it's almost like you can enjoy yourself by just looking at the painting. Now, the last one that I'm going to mention is the Surat Sunday Afternoon in the Park, and this one is fairly distinct um, compared to a lot of his other works because he, he like pretty much dots out every single detail of it, and um, and it sort of focuses in again on that sort of same setting. There's like a park, and there's all these people who are just kind of sitting around, just enjoying themselves, and even though you can't really see their faces, it still brings out a lot of the the serenity and the, the peacefulness that goes on uh, with just enjoying yourself in a day in the park and I think it really works as a as an art piece and all these art pieces I think are definitely worth recommending but I guess I would say that these are some of my favorite artists um, I'll try to put maybe some links below to their works uh, but I think that's really all I can say, and I just wanted to mention before I go that I am not going to be doing videos next week. Next week, will, I'll be gone. I'm on vacation. So next week, uh, I will just be doing, I'll just be having vacation, and then I will come back the following week. So next week, no videos. Um, but uh, I'll be sure to put that in the description, too, in case... Some people forget. Uh, but thank you all so much. I hope you enjoy your day, week, month, and year. And I will see you all not next week, but the following week. Bye.